Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So in this module, let us start looking at another very important concept in the analysis, uh, which arises frequently in linear system analysis and that is of Gaussian random variables. And we are going to see that linear algebra, linear system analysis is very intricately tied to uh, the properties and analysis of Gaussian random variables and especially Gaussian random vectors. All right, so let us look at this very important. So this is another very important What is the Gaussian random variable? The Gaussian random variable is simply if you can if you look at it many of you might already be familiar. It is a random variable let us say if this is our axis this is our x axis and this peak occurs at what is it is called it is mean that is mu and the spread is controlled by the variance right. The spread depends on the variance that is sigma square and the probability density function. So, the PDF or what we call as the probability density function, right, of the Gaussian random variable. is given as f of x of x this is equal to 1 over square root of 2 psi pi sigma square e raised to minus x minus mu whole square divided by 2 sigma square for minus infinity less than x less than infinity. And this quantity mean as we said this is where the peak occurs and this is also the expected value of the random variable that is if you look at the expected value of the random variable that is equal to mu. And if you look at the expected value of x minus mu whole square that is equal to sigma square this is termed as the variance alright. So, this is essentially your mean and uh, this sigma square is termed as the variance of this Gaussian random variable and why we are considering this Gaussian random variable as I have already said this is almost uh, whenever you look at the applications of linear algebra and linear system analysis it is Gaussian random variables Gaussian random vectors arise very very frequently in practical analysis of linear systems. For instance, if you look at any system, communication system, signal processing system, the noise is frequently modeled as a Gaussian random variable, a Gaussian random vector. If you look at machine learning, the different classes, right, the samples from the different classes can be modeled as being obtained from Gaussian uh, processes, right. The samples are as so the different classes can be modeled as essentially your um, uh, Gaussian random processes, right. So, this uh, concept of Gaussian arises very frequently, very important arises very frequently in linear system analysis that is applications of linear algebra for example noise in communication or signal processing or for instance in machine learning
the different that is when you talk about ml different classes can be gaussian the objects belonging to the samples belonging to different classes can be modeled as basically gaussian in nature so this frequently arises very frequently arises in the analysis of linear systems and uh, whenever we talk about the practical applications of linear algebra we have to inevitably talk about gaussians gaussian random variables gaussian random vectors and gaussian random processes okay now a gaussian random vector is basically a collection of gaussian random variables so gaussian random vector which is also termed as basically the correct name for this the technically correct name for this is a multivariate gaussian where we have the vector x bar equals x1 x2 xn and these are jointly gaussian these are jointly gaussian uh, with the mean that is mu that is we have expected value of x bar equal to 0 expected value of I am sorry expected value of x bar equal to mu bar and the covariance matrix this is what is termed as a covariance expected value of x bar minus mu bar expected value of x bar minus mu bar transpose this is equal to r so this is the covariance matrix this is what is termed as a covariance matrix and the probability density function is given as f of x of x bar this will be equal to we are not talking about the multivariate Gaussian f of x of x bar which is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi if uh, since this is an n dimensional vector 2 pi raised to the power of n times the determinant of the covariance remember this is the determinant e raised to minus half x bar minus mu bar transpose r inverse x bar minus mu bar so this is the this is the uh, this is the pdf of the multivariate gaussian right pdf of multivariate gaussian this is the pdf of multivariate gaussian and uh, for mu equal to 0 naturally if mu equal to 0 we have expected value of x bar equal to 0 and then the covariance simply becomes expected value of x bar x bar transpose equal to r and now if you look at the elements of r expected value of x bar x bar transpose equal to r 1 1 r 1 2 r 1 n r 2 1 r 2 2 so on you will first see this is a symmetric matrix and each r i i diagonal element is nothing but the expected value of x i square that is the variance of x i and r i j equals r j i equals expected value of x i times x j this is basically uh, what we call as the correlation right or this is basically the correlation uh, between the two random variables x, x i and x j right. So, 
So, these are the off diagonal, so these are the diagonal entries and these are the off diagonal entries. Now, if the off diagonal entries are 0 for a special case, now consider a special case. That is we have expected value of special case first consider mu bar equal to 0 and then we have expected value of x bar x bar transpose is of the form sigma 1 square sigma 2 square sigma n square that is this is basically diagonal in nature that is covariance matrix R R is R is diagonal in nature which means these different components of the vector the different random variables are uncorrelated because if you look at expected value of x i into x j for i not equal to j that is equal to 0 right. So, this implies that expected value of x i into x j equal to 0 for i not equal to j which implies for any random variable x i x j are this implies x i x j are incorrelated. Now, for Gaussian this specifically implies only because it is Gaussian also implies x i comma x j are independent. So, diagonal covariance matrix for Gaussian only for Gaussian remember not for any general random value because we are considering a Gaussian random vector if the covariance matrix is diagonal it implies that the different components x1, x2, xn these random variables these are uncorrelated and because they are Gaussian jointly Gaussian it also follows that they are independent. And further special case is when we have further when all the variances are equal for r equal to expected value of x bar x bar transpose this is diagonal and the variances are equal that is this is proportional to identity covariance matrix is proportional to identity this implies something very interesting that is each expected value of x i square equals sigma square and expected value of x i x j equal to 0 for i not equal to for i not equal to j implies of course the x i are independent and all the x i have same mean or have identical mean slash variance identical mean and variance that is mean equal to 0 variance equal to sigma square therefore we have these are known as we term that as x1 x2 xn as termed as for such a situation x1 x2 xn are termed as iid that is these are independent and identically distributed gaussian random variables correct i 
identically all right so these are termed as iid that is these are independent identically distributed gaussian random variables all right x1 x2 xn are independent identically distributed random variables and then in that that is all of them have the mean 0 variance sigma square they are uncorrelated because they are gaussian or jointly gaussian it also means they are independent and if you look at the covariance that is essentially proportional to identity it's sigma square times the identity matrix all right so let us stop here and we will continue our discussion in the subsequent modules thank you very much